Congratulations on your pregnancy. Here at Wasatch OBGYN, we are thrilled to be taking care of you during your pregnancy. And we will be going through a bunch of information today on this video to help you to have a successful pregnancy. I am Dr. Sarah Wood. I practice here at a McKay D office and also in Layton. Majority of the information will be found in this bag of, uh, that you'll receive today. And in there is a book of information that's by the American College of OBGYN, so you can reference this information. We also do all of our deliveries here at McKay Hospital, phenomenal hospital. And inside here, it talks about all the different um, things that McKay can offer for you, including child prep classes that are listed here. In this packet also talks about how you can contact our office at 801-387-8350. This number will get you during regular business hours to our office or after hours on-call provider. Our practice does do an on-call um, schedule, which means there is someone on-call for you 24-7. It may not always be your particular provider, but for your safety, we do have a provider every night available for you. If you have any further questions, please let us know. At this point, um, our, my other partners will go through some additional information with you today. My name is Dr. Allison Mincer, and I see patients at McKay-D and in our North Ogden office. And today I'm going to talk to you about medicines that are safe to take in pregnancy. The one medicine you already know of is your prenatal vitamin, and we hope that you've been tolerating it okay. Sometimes nausea in pregnancy makes it difficult to tolerate. Try taking it at nighttime. Sometimes that can help. We're going to give you a list of medications in your new OB packet that you'll see here and we'll provide for you. And I recommend that you take this and either put it on your fridge or put it in your medicine cabinet at home so that you have it for easy access. These are medicines that are over the counter and available to you uh, without a prescription to treat common ailments. On here, you'll see things such as um, issues with sleep, a yeast infection, if you have a cold or a cough, things here you can find over the counter. The other thing I want to remind you is if you have a minor pain or a fever, we don't want you to take ibuprofen or NSAIDs during your pregnancy. You want to make sure that if you have a pain, uh, you have a headache, you have a pain in your knee, you want to stick to Tylenol. Make sure that you're not taking more than 4,000 milligrams in a day. The other thing we need to talk about today is going to the dentist. Sometimes it's been a little while since we've been to the dentist. Luckily, during pregnancy, your insurance, most insurances cover a routine cleaning and now's the time to reach out. We definitely want you to have good oral hygiene while you're pregnant. Hi, I'm Dr. Audrey Jericho and I practice out of our Layton office. And I'm gonna to talk to you about a number of topics today that are important in your pregnancy. Sexual activity is completely safe in a normal, healthy pregnancy. If there are any complications that arise and restrictions that we need to give you, we'll be sure to tell you. And regarding sexually transmitted infections, we screen all patients at the beginning of the pregnancy and encourage people to practice safe sex to decrease their risk because this can have an impact on your baby. One in seven women will experience depression or anxiety at some point in their pregnancy, and that's why screening is routine in our office. We're happy to have mental health care providers located in all of our office to help us, so whether you're interested in lifestyle changes that might improve your moods, counseling or medication or a combination of all three, we have your back on that. Some women worry in pregnancy about how to wear a seatbelt properly. We definitely recommend all patients wear seatbelts uh, because there are a lot of benefits. Just wear the lap belt across your hip, the shoulder belt between the breasts and to the side of the uterus. Many patients unfortunately will experience substance use disorder at some point in their life. Of course, we'd love it if our pregnant patients or patients who are thinking about getting pregnant we're completely free of nicotine, smoking cigarettes, using e-cigs. We wish that they were free of alcohol, street drugs, chronic pain pills like Lortab or Percocet. But we also understand those substances can be very difficult to cut back and quit sometimes. So if this is a concern for you, please reach out to us because we have a lot of resources to help you on this. Evidence is clear that your relationships affects your health and your baby's health. We support you during this exciting time and we encourage you to surround yourself with healthy, loving, respectful relationships. You and your baby certainly deserve it. I'm Dr. Stacia Moyer and I work with Wasatch OBGYN. I work out of our McKay office and our North Ogden office and we're gonna spend some time today talking about diet and pregnancy. 
For diet and pregnancy, the first thing I tell everyone is you are not eating for two people. Okay, you really only need about 200 to 300 more calories a day when you're pregnant than when you're not pregnant. So we're really not talking about huge changes in your diet. There are some certain food restrictions throughout your pregnancy related to your diet, however. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about is uncooked and undercooked meats. Okay, so things like sushi are not considered safe in pregnancy. Fish in general, however, is. Okay, so we actually do recommend fish about two to three times a week in pregnancy because there's lots of healthy fats and oils. If you don't like fish, that's okay. You can always do something like a DHA or a fish oil supplement in order to help offset that. However, there are certain fish that you need to avoid. So there are four big fish that we don't recommend you eat in pregnancy, and those are gonna be things like shark, tilefish, swordfish, and king mackerel. Not fish that a ton of people eat anyway, but just a good idea to make sure that you avoid them. Other foods that are gonna be important that you avoid in pregnancy are things like deli meats. You actually can eat deli meat, you just have to heat it to steaming before you eat it so that it kills any bacteria that may have grown on it. Other things that you wanna think about are hot dogs, and that falls in the same category as deli meats. You wanna make sure they're just heated to steaming before you eat them and well cooked all the way through. So I usually recommend eating a hot dog in your home, one that you can make sure is well cooked, not one that's been sitting under a warm. Other important things with diet are gonna be things like um, pasteurized and unpasteurized cheeses. So unpasteurized cheeses, which are usually soft white cheeses, are not considered safe in pregnancy. I say that, but in general, most grocery stores, those soft white cheeses are going to be pasteurized cheeses. But if you have any questions, you can always look on the label and just make sure. Other things to think about when we talk about diet is the nausea. Okay, so we're talking about what you can eat and a lot of people really just don't feel like they can eat at this time. And that's really, really common. What we tell people is just small frequent meals throughout the day, don't get too full, don't get too hungry, and then make sure that you're sipping on water throughout the day. And that can be really helpful to help with the nausea. Other things that you can think about are doing things like ginger supplements, lemon works well for some people. And then there's always a ton of different medications that we can try. And some of them are things you can buy over the counter like vitamin B6 or Unisom, okay? Make sure you get the sleep tabs, not the sleep gels. And if you are gonna use Unisom, be careful it is a sleep aid. Don't take it before driving or when using heavy machinery. I'm Dr. Candace Nielsen. I work at McKay and Layton, and I'm gonna to talk to you about vaccines today. There are two vaccines that we're going to recommend that you get during pregnancy. The first is the Tdap vaccine, which is for whooping cough or pertussis. Pertussis is very serious for the newborn, so we're going to recommend that you get it during your pregnancy, during the weeks uh, 27 to 36. And the reason is so you can uh, make antibodies to the pertussis vaccine and pass them through the placenta to the baby to protect the baby when they're born. We also recommend that anybody who is going to be around the newborn baby also get a booster of the Tdap if they have not already received it. The other vaccine that we're gonna recommend that you get during your pregnancy is the influenza vaccine. So flu season is from October to May, and we're gonna recommend that you get the flu vaccine as soon as it becomes available. So there are two vaccines that we may recommend that you receive postpartum. Um, so one is the MMR vaccine, that stands for measles, mumps, and rubella, and the other one is for varicella or the chickenpox. And these will depend on if you um, are immune to rubella, which is the German measles, or to chickenpox. And we do check these during your new OB labs. And so if you haven't had these, or if you are no longer immune to them, then we'll recommend that you get those vaccines postpartum. The reason why you can't get them during pregnancy is because these viruses are live viruses and it's not safe to get them during pregnancy. So you have to get them postpartum. All the vaccines that we're recommending during your pregnancy are safe for you and your unborn baby. Um, but if you have any additional questions, just talk to your doctor during your visit and she'll be happy to answer any questions. Hello, my name is Dr. Cassandra Foss and I see patients at Katie Hospital and the Layton Clinic. I'm going to review prenatal testing options. These are options to screen your pregnancy for chromosomal abnormalities, birth defects, or genetic disorders. It is important to know that Although we offer this testing to everybody, it is optional testing and it's important for you to decide if you desire the testing or not. We are going to help you figure out if this testing is right for you. The biggest question you should ask yourself is 
how you would want to proceed if your testing were to be abnormal. So if your pregnancy were to screen positive for a severe high-risk abnormality, there would be options to either continue your pregnancy or even be referred for a pregnancy termination if it was something really severe. Um, naturally, we understand these are very challenging decisions to make and we would help you decide um, how to proceed if a test came back abnormal. Some women may feel uncomfortable making this decision and may actually opt out of the screening altogether. Any of these approaches are perfectly acceptable um, and we're happy to help you decide which decision to make. Things that we can screen for are chromosomal abnormalities. Um, these are defects in the baby's DNA. Um, we can also screen for birth defects such as neural tube defects, defects in the formation of the baby's brain or spine. So we've talked about screening for your baby, now let's talk about genetic screening for you. We can test to see if you are a carrier of any genetic mutations that you could pass on to your children. The two major genetic disorders we offer screening for are cystic fibrosis and spinal muscular atrophy. If you've already been tested for these conditions, then certainly let us know. Or if you have any questions about what these conditions are, then ask your doctor. We understand prenatal screening is a challenging and confusing topic, and we are here to guide you through these decisions so we can have more information about the health of your pregnancy. Hi, I'm Dr. Margaret Lister, and I practice at North Ogden and McKay Hospital, and I'm gonna be talking to you about exercise. The first thing that I like to talk to all patients about is that exercise is safe with pregnancy. Um, everybody thinks that, oh, I can't do that or I can't start exercise when I'm pregnant and that is not true. It's really important that you do something every day. So the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends 150 minutes each week. So, and that's moderate strenuous exercise. So what does that mean, moderate strenuous exercise? It means that you're having a sweat on, doesn't matter what you're doing, but you have a sweat and you can carry on a conversation breathlessly. Can't sing, but you can speak. So do whatever you think that you enjoy doing and do it consistently, and that's the important thing. It's okay if you've never done it before, start slow and start moving. Exercises that you shouldn't do in the first trimester, you can pretty much do anything. Um, but anything that has um, accidents or you could contact your abdomen to hurt it um, after 14 weeks is something that you probably shouldn't do. Skydiving, falling off a horse, you know, basketball, soccer, where you can get hit in the abdomen. Those are things that you shouldn't do. If you have a question, then ask your doctor, but you can always walk. You can always do body weight, sit-ups, push-ups, squats. Push-ups, you'll get to a certain point where that becomes uncomfortable. So use your head if it's uncomfortable for you to do that or if it hurts you to do that, then don't do that. Warning signs to look for when you're exercising, vaginal bleeding, talk to your physician about that. Or if you're short of breath before you even start exercising, that's not normal. And then things to keep in mind while you're exercising, make sure you can speak breathlessly, make sure that you have a place to cool down um, so you don't wanna be exercising in 80 degree heat and make sure you're well hydrated. Enjoy. Happy walking.